Well, hello, I'm Tim O'Connor, and I'm excited to help introduce our segment on population genetics in the Summer Institute for Statistical Genetics. Um, I'm uh, an assistant professor at the University of Maryland, and I study human population genetics and of large data. Um, I like to look at fine scale population structure and lots of other questions in that area. And I got into this field, I'm sure as many of you have a passion for biology and uh, evolutionary theory is kind of one of the key hypotheses that we use to understand biology and the world around us. And it can help to inform everything from uh, genome-wide association studies in human disease to the patterns of spread and migration in plants and animals and, and it can also start to open up questions in anthropology and adaptation to different environments, and it has a lot of different applications. Um, during the co this course, we're planning on covering a number of different uh, objectives. My learning objectives um, include describing some of the key evolutionary forces uh, that shape genetic variation. Um, we'll discuss some methods and ideas of how demography can influence genetic variation. And we'll also be able to start working and um, understanding different methodologies to find population structure, to um, look at rare variation, and to, as a cornerstone of all of this, is to use simulation to help us understand evolution and genetics. Some of the main principles in evolutionary theory as they apply to uh, genetic information. Uh, include natural selection, that's everybody's favorite from Darwin, um, but they also include things like mutation, so the, the arrival of new variation. Um, so in this case, we, you know, we've got a, a, a little uh, diagram here under mutation where a, a new variation has arisen that didn't exist in the parents. Um, we can also see genetic variation being sh uh, shaped by genetic drift, and so this is this random kind of passing of variation over time, and this can cause kind of a, a random effect in terms of uh, which variation rises or falls in allele frequency. And then also we have the effects of migration. So we have long-term, long-distance kind of migration where populations that have diverged come into new contact, and we can see this in the context of things like admixture and um, even the integration of Denisovan and haplotypes into our genome. Um, and I'd like to introduce Ryan, who's the, the other co-teacher here, and he will introduce his part of the, this course. And I'm Ryan Hernandez, I'm an associate professor, and I'll be co-teaching this course with Tim. And uh, in order to describe how evolutionary forces affect patterns of genetic variation, we're gonna talk a lot about different summary statistics for describing genetic variation. We'll start with simple summary statistics like pi or the average number of pairwise differences. And we're going to think about how those patterns of variation differ across populations. We're also going to think about more sophisticated statistics like the site frequency spectrum, which show the proportion of variance at different allele frequencies within a sample. And of course, we're going to think about how evolutionary forces affect those summary statistics, both across populations as well as across species and uh, think about how we can understand more about the evolutionary history of a population by looking at these different summary statistics. We're gonna think about this in the context of some classical ideas such as the Hardy-Weinberg principle. We're gonna study the assumptions that are um, within the Hardy-Weinberg principle and what happens when we violate those assumptions. We're gonna think about simulations using the Wright-Fisher model and we're gonna see what happens when we make different assumptions about the evolutionary model um, with regard to the output of the simulations and the patterns of genetic variation. We're then going to bring it all together and think about how demography and natural selection affect the genetic basis of complex traits. And we're going to think about phenotypic variation within and across populations and think about how, how we can describe evolutionary models that would represent that those patterns of genetic variation. We know variants can affect multiple traits. Um, we know that some variants are going to be subject to natural selection. Um, and so we're going to think about how we can model patterns of genetic variation and what consequences they have for patterns of phenotypic variation. We're super excited to meet you um, in this online venue this year. And we can't wait to tell you all we know and, uh, and answer lots and lots of your questions.